Good morning, friends. I'm Miss Shelby. And I'm Pastor Frankie. Welcome to Connect. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the cool ways God can help us and all of our friends and family and neighbors, too. But before we do, let's start with a game. This is a game you guys have probably heard of before, but this one is with a twist. You're going to have a three-legged race. Now, since you guys aren't here with us, we're going to use leaders to help demonstrate. First, you will want to find a partner. Then you will face your partner. One will face backwards and the other will face forward. You will then take a bandana or a piece of cloth and tie your inner thighs together. Once that's done, you're all set. Go ahead and find the starting line. Did you realize that in that game, each team really had to work together? One person couldn't walk one way while the other person walked another way. One person couldn't go fast while the other person went slow. That's right. We had to work together to help each other. There are a lot of ways we can help the people around us in everyday life. Like we can help a friend or a sibling with homework. Or you can help an elderly person carry their groceries at the store. Let's take a few minutes now and talk about how you have helped someone in the last week and maybe some ideas and ways that you can help someone this week. Now, Frankie, I have a question for you. All right, hit me. Are you sure? Okay. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Can you just ask the question now? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Has there ever been a time when your friends needed help and you weren't sure on what to do? Maybe you had a problem that was bigger and more serious in needing help with homework or like learning how to ride a bike? Yeah, Shelby, my friends uh, live far away. So I have friends in Tennessee, Michigan, uh, slash China. Um, and a lot of times when they have problems, I can't help because I live here in Arizona which makes me really sad. So there's not a whole lot I can do to help them in situations. Thanks for sharing, Frankie. That must have been a hard situation. And the good news is God is an expert in everything and he always is there to help us. All we have to do is pray. Which brings us to our big idea for this week. I can help others when I pray. There comes a time when as much as we want to help a person with a problem, there's nothing we could do ourselves. But when the problem seems too big for us to handle, there's still someone who can help. When we want to help others or go to places or do anything in the world, we also need to talk to God about it in our prayer. So when friends and others around us have a problem that are big for you and me to handle, what do you think we should do? We can pray. Let's all say the big idea together. I can help others when I pray. Hi there, you little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl, and welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Introducing your host, Carl. And your co-host, Cassie. Where we learn where we grow and we talk about Jesus. Once again, welcome to Grow TV. So today, we're gonna to be doing something very, very special. We're gonna figure out how to help. That's right. I know all of you are sitting there thinking to yourself, Carl, how can I help? We've come to the right guy. I, Carl, am the best at helping. I'm good at helping people cross the street. I'm good at helping animals eat their food. And all in all, I'm just good at helping. Hey Carl. Ah! How's it going? 
I mean, good, I guess. What's up? I was curious if I could get your help with something. Well, that's funny you should ask, because I was just telling them how good I am at helping people. Awesome. This is perfect for you, then. All right, here's what I need. I'm trying to find a story in the Bible that talks about helping others. Oh, I got plenty I can think of. But they can only use their words and their minds. What? I just need to find a story in the Bible where someone helps someone else with their words or their minds. That's not possible. Sure it is. Well, how would I find a story like that? I don't know. Use your mind. Use your mind. Use your mind. I can't do it, Cassie. I can't do it! Do what? Use my mind. I tried to use my mind to open the Bible and find a story, but I can't. Shh. What? Did you try to mind control your Bible? <laughs> no. That would be ridiculous. I don't act like that. What do you think I am, 12? What did you say? I said I don't act like that. I ain't 12. What did I say? This is it. You did it, Carl. I did. What, what, did I, what did I say? You just helped me. With your mind. The story's in Acts 12. <laughs> cool. This is a story where Peter gets thrown into prison just for being a Christian. And when the people of the community found out, they started to pray for him. Out loud or in their head? It could have been both. When we pray, we can do it out loud or we can do it in our minds. So what happened when the people prayed to God about Peter? Well, he was kept in prison. But in the middle of the night, he was woken up by an angel. The angel made the prison shackles fall off of him and let him out of his cell and out of prison. <laughs> That's crazy! It is, and you know what's even crazier than that? It was the prayer of the people around him that got him out of prison. What do you mean? I thought the angel did it. That's true, but the people prayed that God would help Peter, and God sent an angel. Wow! So it is possible to help people by just using our words and our minds. But not mind control, right? No, nope, definitely not mind control. Got it! I'm glad to know I can help others when I pray. Wait a minute. I think that's our... Big idea! Well, we found our big idea, and it is, I can help others when I pray. So counting down from 100, we're gonna say, I can help others when I pray. 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 72, 71, 70, 36, 35, 34, 4, Three, two, one. I can help others when I pray! That is so true, and we can't forget it. So let's get out there and help people! Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV! Okay. Our Bible story takes place in Acts chapter 12, starting in verse 1. It says, About this time, King Herod arrested some people who belonged to the church. He planned to make them suffer greatly. He had James killed with a sword. James was John's brother. Herod saw that the death of James pleased some Jews, so he arrested Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After Herod arrested Peter, he put him in prison. Peter was placed under guard. He was watched by four groups of four soldiers each. Herod planned to put Peter on a public trial. It would take place after the Passover feast. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church prayed hard to God for him. It was the night before Herod was going to bring him to trial. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Two chains held him there. Lookouts stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared. A light shone in the prison cell. The angel struck Peter on his side. Peter woke up. Quick, the angel said, get up. The chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. Peter did so. Put on your coat, the angel told him. Follow me. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards. Then they came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. They went through it. They walked the length of one street. Suddenly, the angel left Peter. 
Then Peter realized what had happened. He said, Now I know for sure that the Lord has sent his angel. He sent me free from Herod's power. He saved me from everything that the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When Peter understood what had happened, he went to Mary's house. Mary was the mother of John Mark. Many people gathered in her home. They were praying. Peter knocked on the outer entrance. A servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. She recognized Peter's voice. She was so excited she ran back without opening the door. Peter is at the door, she exclaimed. You're out of your mind, they said to her, but she kept telling them it was true. So they said it must be his angel. Peter kept on knocking. When they opened the door and saw him, they were amazed. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quieter. He explained how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said. Then he went to another place. It says while Peter was in prison, other believers prayed earnestly for him. Frankie, what do you think earnestly means? Earnestly means seriously. That means they didn't pray casually before a meal. They put in a lot of energy and prayed hard for God to answer their prayers. The people knew they couldn't do anything to help Peter. So instead, they prayed earnestly. What happened what? as a result? God sent an angel to release Peter from jail. It was a miracle. The prayers for Peter helped him. That shows us that prayer truly helps others. God hears our prayers and answers them. That's something to remember when we pray for people in our lives who have a problem. Remember our big idea? That's right. We can help others when we pray. <laughs> We've learned a lot about prayer so far. It kind of makes prayer seem hard or complicated because there's a lot to remember. Let's take a look at this cell phone. Shelby, who's someone I could call on this cell phone? Uh, maybe family, friends, loved ones, anyone who's not in this room right now. You would have to call them to talk to them. If they didn't answer though, you wouldn't be able to talk to them. I mean, I guess you could leave a message, but that's not the same. So let me ask you this. Can I call Jesus on my cell phone? No, I can't. So how do I talk to Jesus if I can't call him on the cell phone? Well, that's what's so cool about prayer. To talk to Jesus, you don't need a phone. You don't need anything at all. You just start talking. And unlike people we have to call on our phone, we don't have to worry that Jesus will miss our call because he's busy. Jesus will answer us when we stop and pray. Friends, the Bible talks about prayer a lot. Let's do a little Bible scavenger hunt and find some verses that tell us about prayer. Everyone at home can play along too and see if you can beat our leaders in finding these verses. First, let's find James 5.16. When you find it, hit your buzzer and read it for us. Ready, set, go. James 5.16, everybody. So confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you might be healed. The prayer of a godly person is powerful. Things happen because of it. This verse tells us it's important to be honest with others and to share with others when we have done something wrong. But it also says to pray for each other so that you may be healed. Lastly, it says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful. When we live for God and we pray for others, our prayers are very powerful and helpful. Let's take a look at other verses on prayer. Now, let's search for John 14, 13 through 14. Ready, set, go! <laughs> John chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. 
And I will do anything you ask in my name. Then the Father will receive glory from the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name. I will do it. At the end of a prayer, have you ever heard people say, In Jesus' name, Amen? This verse tells us that when we pray and ask for things in Jesus' name, the name of Jesus is powerful, but also says something else important that I want you guys to understand. It says that we can ask for anything in Jesus' name. Now, does that mean that every prayer will be answered in the way we want it? How we want it? Hmm, what do you guys think? For example, if you prayed for your PE teacher to be turned into a chocolate bunny in Jesus' name, do you think that would happen? I don't think so. When we pray in Jesus' name, we need to pray for things that will help and show the world God's goodness and power. Okay, last one. Let's hunt for Matthew 21, verse 22. Ready, set, go! Here's Matthew 21, verse 22. All right. Um, All right, Matthew 21, verse 22, for real. So, if you believe, you will receive what you ask for when you pray. Finally, when we pray, we need to have faith God will answer our prayer. Now, maybe God doesn't always answer it in the way that we want, but God definitely always gives us an answer. Maybe it's a yes. Maybe it's a no. Maybe it's a not right now. Or maybe it's an idea that can solve our problem. Maybe it's help with a conversation that we need to have. Whatever the answer is, we have to believe God hears and will answer our prayers. Now we're going to listen to a song that will help us remember God is always listening when we pray. When we go to God in prayer, God doesn't only help us, but also the people we're praying for. So one last time, what is our big idea again? I can help others when I pray. And maybe while we're singing this song, you might think of something in your life that you need to talk to God about. We want to help you with that. Find an adult and ask them to pray for you. I'm reading my what it says to me it tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know our God knows exactly what I need so I remember this let's go when you ask he cares when you see when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you see, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Oh, oh. I'm reading my B I B L E, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never, ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, knock When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door.
That's it for this week, friends. Parents, be sure to check us out on Facebook or Instagram this week at BCC Connect CM or check out bccmesa.com slash children's. We'll be posting some discussion questions that you can talk about with your kids this week to help remind them that they can help others when they pray. And we'll be praying for you all this week. Adios.